We've talked in other videos about pacing, which involves finding and then adapting to your limits. And I said that the price for going outside your limits is an intensification of symptoms called post-exertional malaise, or PEM, P-E-M. One trigger for malaise is your heart rate. If it goes above your individual limit, which is called the anaerobic threshold, or AT, you experience malaise. In this video, I'll show you one way to avoid post-exertional malaise by using a heart rate monitor. The anaerobic threshold is different for each person, but it's often around 60% of a person's maximum heart rate. And maximum heart rate is defined as 220 minus a person's age. Let me write that out for you. Maximum heart rate is 220 minus age, and we can get that asterisk out of there and put an asterisk in over here instead times 60 percent. So let me give you an example. If someone is 50 years old, her maximum heart rate is 220 minus her age, 50, and that equals 170, and then take 170 and multiply it by 0.6, and you get 102. So that's the anaerobic threshold for somebody who is 50, somewhere around 102. There are at least two ways to calculate your anaerobic threshold. I found mine by observing the pulse in my wrist while, while I was walking. I experimented with different walking speeds to find what heart rate triggered fatigue. Another way is by getting a treadmill test, which is offered in some doctor's offices and in many hospitals and other healthcare facilities. You can see an example of this in videos prepared by uh, Dr. Nancy Klimas' CFS clinic. Uh, just Google Klimas exercise videos or check the CSF Knowledge Center website. Once you know your threshold, you can monitor yourself to discover when you're beyond your AT. One way to track your heart rate is to count the beats, as I did, but many people use a heart rate monitor, an inexpensive machine available for $30 and up. Monitoring your heart rate has at least five benefits. The first is awareness. Monitoring your heart rate shows you how often you're beyond your anaerobic threshold and helps you to identify the triggers. As one person told us, just getting the heart rate monitor was a huge eye-opener for me. Everything put me over the threshold. So let me write that in as awareness of triggers and frequency. Awareness of triggers can suggest how to change. One person found that just going up a flight of stairs pushed her heart rate beyond her threshold. Her solution was to stop halfway and rest. Another person said that lifting her daughter used to push her over the edge. Her solution was to sit down and have the child climb into her lap. A third person found that many activities put her over the limit. She's found ways to be active with less exertion. For example, when she's working in the kitchen, she uses a chair on rollers, she empties the dishwasher in stages, and she uses a grabber to pick things up without having to bend over. The second benefit is retraining. Let me write that in. Retraining. The alarm feature on the heart rate monitor tells you when you're about to go outside your limits. Many people set the alarm to go off when their heart rate is slightly below their threshold. As one person told us, that audible alarm was the best training tool I could have had. Third, the monitor helps educate others about limits. Let me add that as number three, educating others. 
Several people have told us that using the heart rate monitor helped their families to understand the importance of heart rate and led to family members reminding them to stop when the alarm goes off. Fourth, knowing and staying within your anaerobic threshold gives you a way to avoid post-exertional malaise. So number four is avoiding PEM, avoiding PEM. This is a big benefit because the intensification of symptoms in post-exertional malaise is out of proportion to the overdoing. Some activity might push you just slightly beyond your anaerobic threshold, but lead to one or two hours or more of forced bed rest. Fifth, using a monitor can help you become aware of a significant additional medical problem called POTS, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Let me write that down, at least in the abbreviated version, POTS. POTS causes a rapid increase in heart rate, usually of more than 30 beats per minute, when a person stands up. It creates lightheadedness, nausea, and sometimes fainting and other symptoms. If you experience a dramatic increase in your heart rate right after standing up, consider discussing this with your doctor. Lastly, I'd like to give you some ideas about whether you should monitor your heart rate. <clears throat> the people in our program who have benefited the most from monitoring their heart rate tend to be those functioning below 20% of normal, and also people with POTS. Both groups often exceed their uh, threshold doing everyday activities such as those mentioned earlier. But other people with CFS may benefit as well. For example, finding my anaerobic threshold enabled me to determine the level of exercise that I could tolerate without triggering malaise. If you want to monitor your heart rate, we recommend that you discuss the topic with your doctor. As preparation, you can do some informal data gathering. You can make note of your heart rate while resting and also check to see whether your heart rate increases dramatically when you do activities such as standing up, climbing stairs, or just being active for a few minutes. If your heart rate when you're active is near or above 60% of your maximum heart rate, you may benefit from monitoring your heart rate and learning to keep it below your anaerobic threshold.